So after much toil and trial and error and messing with things, um, I think I've kind of figured out. I haven't tried any of the other builds, but the Goldberg emulator. This is basically a program that, in essence, acts as a shim to some games that expect, like, Steam as a dependency or as their method of DRM. And it kind of stands in there and, like, prevents the game from running Steam, basically, right from the get-go. So if you remember in some of the previous videos where, like, Steam would run almost immediately by default... Again, this is kind of one of those hit and miss things. Some games are still going to error out, others won't. Some may give you warnings and so on. So this is what the GitLab page looks like. It's mrgoldberg.gitlab.io um, slash goldberg underscore emulator. Um, if we go to the base, I mean... Yeah, it redirects you to the Goldberg emulator, so either way. So you can download like the latest builds for it, and it'll give you this, and that is basically this build right here anyway, pretty much. So that's what it directs you to, and this build includes everything for Linux and Windows. So when you get it, it'll basically be a zip folder goldberg land steam emu and so you've got debug experimental so these experimental ones are basically cut off everything so that it's exclusively lan network traffic that it's looking for and filtering and allowing in so it yeah, it's basically a firewall that blocks anything outside of the LAN network so that you can play Steam games on multiplayer on your LAN as a big LAN party. The Linux one, basically you've got, oh, 32-bit and 64-bit. Kind of make sure that you have the right one for the right library and you will replace it, basically. So you'll see it's libsteam.api.so. You're replacing that, so I would recommend like renaming the original so that you've still got it backed up, just in case. But then you just copy and paste this libsteam API and steamclient.so in place. I'd copy both of them over in case, like, even if you've only got like libsteam API, I'd copy the steamclient.so over just in case. And then more often than not, you're going to need to have a Steam app ID .txt, which is what this is for. You just copy this, rename it like it says, and edit it with the game ID. Oh, a lot of games do require this in order to run, because some games will run Steam anyway, in spite of having the new shimmed libraries in place, in spite of them being there, it'll still run Steam to get that app ID or whatever. Once you put that there, quite a few games actually don't go and run Steam right from the get-go. So you've got Lobby Connect there, um, and there are readmes for everything, so it's like documented throughout it. Source Code Bundle, Steam Settings, this can be very helpful for certain settings that you want or enabled DLC as well. Um, some games will not enable DLC, so some of these you may need. The README kind of goes into depth about this. So, yeah, it kind of gives you all the documentation that you need. Depending on if it's older or not, you may need to put the DLC.txt in to enable certain IDs, and then the games will run fine. Some games may need this, like, oh, EU4 or Stellaris, in order to or CK2, which I haven't gotten to run, even with this shimmed in. And then the interfaces kind of tells it different things too. So that that's kind of the folder structure that you get. You do have various tools that come along with it. Okay, so yeah, it'll generate a... So this allows you to generate interfaces for your game. If you've got the original DLL, it'll read them and generate that TXT for you. But yeah, those are your settings. Um, one thing that it's going to do once you run it at first, 
video downloader, why? Is it will create a Goldberg Steam Emu saves folder. And so in here, you've got various saves that it's going to have, but the settings folder is the one you're going to probably be more interested in because you've got your account name. It'll set the account name for the interface. You've got the language, of course, and then the port it's listening on, and then the Steam user ID. These are important for like multiplayer things, particularly if you're running like multiple instances of it. There are tools out there for running like split screen stuff using multiple instances of the same game. And you've got to emulate different accounts and Steam user IDs on the same machine in order to get them to work because you can't connect with the same ID to a server. So that's kind of the layout of the whole thing. So the next thing is actually getting your games to run. So there are, there are a number, variety of games. So some games may not have those library files as I indicated before. So if I go down to Monster Sanctuary, um, if you remember in my previous video about DRM free stuff, oh, Monster Sanctuary never had a Steam app ID in it, a Steam client or a libsteam API in it. So what this allows it to do is if it doesn't find those in the current working directory. Apparently what it does is it runs Steam from the get-go, if you recall from last time when it looked like the game ran fine, but then it pulled up Steam. Now when I run it, what happens Do, do, do. So now it doesn't run Steam anymore, but I do not have a functionality of continuing from a save game that from before that's within Steam. So if I were to start a new game, I could go in here and I pick... So when I start a new game, skip all that. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Eagle's fine. Skip all that. And then I can save and quit and then exit, and then let us go back and check our... Huh, it doesn't save that there, interesting. Um... So I'm not sure where it saves that stuff. Let me go back in. It might save it in a separate directory because it's running without Steam in place. So that's what I'm going to assume currently. So it does keep the save. So it's probably got somewhere in the home folder that saves it, but I'm not looking for that right now. So Monster Sanctuary runs without Steam in place. Um, if you remember Mindustry, um, I have the libsteam API .back.so, which is the original libsteam one. And then it's got libsteamworks 4j.so, which is basically the Steamworks Java library that they're using for this. And then I've got Steam Client here, and then the Steam App ID. Um, so yeah. So it'll error out on, like, Steam, but it comes up with the game, and it actually doesn't kick me out so instead of like running steam it just like uh we can't do this there's some things that won't work and then i can go into campaign and it runs just fine so i quit and that's fine and dandy 
some games I've still run into issues with. So like Metro, did I add? Okay, so it already has a Steam app ID.txt here. Oh, but Metro still runs Steam in the background for some reason. And there are probably some other configurations that I haven't looked into, which is where more experimentation comes into play. Oh, uh, so for games that are Windows games on Linux, I found some of them are still hit and miss. So Skyrim crashes straight up, but my summer car, when I, I found that when I run that, it. So it, it has some of the stuff that's different, but I can go into the game and I can still play it. So before I think it had problems, I don't remember exactly, but it runs just fine. And it doesn't use the Steam save to do stuff. Um, music is not exactly imported, but you know what? That's okay. I can go into new game. Last name. Sh yeah, I could change that if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to right now. Permadeath. No permadeath. Um, granted. Blah, 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 Grand Tour, blah, 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 blah. And then we can go begin. So I know so far I've shown ones that have worked so far. Get, uh, we'll just give it a second before I can like get out and then... Bye. Do, 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 do. Come on. Boy, you're killing me. Nice filter effect. I like it. Anyway. Yes, I'm sure. Anyway, so that that's an option, you know? Um, so there are some games that I haven't quite tested. Oh, and some games that get kind of weird. So let's see. Which ones did not quite work with this? There were some. I can't remember which ones that complained about not having access to Steam. API when I did it. Not that one. See, I think part of Skyrim's problem was something else other than the Steam libraries. Blah, blah, blah.
Might have been Sins of a Solar Empire, but that messes with my, oh, stuff as well. Oh, wait, maybe it was. So Sins of a Solar Empire, when I tried running the launcher, it, oh, complained that I didn't own the game, apparently. And then, oh, that it couldn't connect to something. So some games will still complain that it can't connect to the Steam API, but that may be due to certain interfaces not being able to run. Oh. So let's go back to Metro, actually, because that one was a case of... This might be a case of interfaces, but... So give it a second to scroll on the screen. So see, it still has to run Steam for some reason. I don't know if it's something to do with the app ID TXT or what. So it does not let me. We're going to pull out the big guns. Kill it. <laughs> oh, I need to quit Steam. So it runs at Steam and runtime. So not everything seems to work, like I said. Oh, some things do work quite well, though, which is cool when it does. So what we do, um, one example is Factorio. So when I ran Factorio, and so it's got an interesting structure. So you've got your libraries here and then your bin here. So like I said, you drop it in the current working directory. And then after that, you run it. So those are basically the base three files. If you're running Linux native games that I would drop in, make sure it's like either the right 64 bit or 32 bit as necessary. If you're using a file manager like LF, it will tell you that, but then it'll complain that it couldn't initialize a steam API and run anyway. And so then you can still play your game. So you can new game, blah. A lot of the Steam stuff won't work, but for games like Factorio, you still got access to mods and whatnot. The other... So yeah. I think there was one more that I was thinking about. So, and then again, remember, some games are not going to have that, oh, DRM all the time. So some games are going to naturally, like, just be like, oh, you got this, but that's okay. Like Rise to Ruins. Okay. So it comes up with this. Don't believe in DRM. Again, this is one of those DRM things and with companies that implement Steam as a soft DRM, Goldberg kind of helps remove some of that layering, but there's still some tweaking that you have to do. Goldberg is, of course, open source, which means that it is updated on occasion. So, yeah, I'd recommend Goldberg for like those games that are a little bit more picky, but again, it takes some tweaking to do. Ooh, and if you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat, I've got plenty of places in the description. Discord, Gilded, and what have you. Check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one.